Welcome back for another Gen Con preview. Jason Levine with the Dice Tower here, and I'm at the CMON booth, and we're going to look at a whole bunch of stuff that CMON has either out or coming out. And the first thing we're looking at is Narcos, and I'm excited about this one. I mean, it's a great TV show, and uh... yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, based on the uh, hit Netflix show, and in this game, uh, one of the players is going to take on the role of El Patron, and he is hiding out in one of his many locations hidden around Colombia. And the other players take on uh, the roles of one of the four factions that's trying to take him down. So we've got the FBI and La Policia and other rival drug gangs. And they're going to be working cooperatively, but they have uh, asymmetrical starting points. So uh, they'll have s d uh, different powers that they'll be able to use uh, to take their advantage. And like, they'll feel uh, he'll feel them creeping up behind them, and like th they'll get closer and closer, but. He won't, might not even sense how close they're getting until it's too late. But they could be right directly behind him, and he would have no idea that they're there until uh, you know later on in the game. So um, anyway, what uh, El Patron is going to do is, on his turns, he's going to uh, put out uh, his Sicarios, which are like his enforcers that are going to do things uh, mm -hmm. throughout uh, the game. And he, they can earn him glory points. However, um, they're also going to indicate how close they might be to uh, El Patron. So it's going to give uh, some information to all of the hunters trying to track him down. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is, uh, throughout the course of different seasons, they're going to get closer and closer. The uh, hunters, what they're going to do on their turn is they're going to have uh, two different figures that are going to have actions that they can do. And uh, what's going to happen is uh, action cards are going to be revealed of uh, different strengths. And then they're going to have to decide how uh, they're going to be able to best use uh, action cards for their two guys. So three action cards come up and they'll have two actions to do and one of those actions will just be uh, discarded. So they can do things like uh, do investigations. Um, if they use a three, a two or a one card, they can ask things of El Patron like uh, what uh, type of uh, location are you in? Are you in a jungle region or in a city region? You can ask them uh, the range uh, that you're within or which region on the board. So there's two different regions, uh, there's three different regions on the board that you can ask about. You can attack the Sicarios because if the Sicarios are on the board at the end of a season, then uh, El Patron is gonna get uh, glory points. And so he starts off at zero glory points, but he works his way up. And uh, once the people of Colombia love him to a certain degree, there's no way they're going to ever allow him to be captured. Uh, you can try to capture El Patron. So if you think you are on his location or within one location of him, you can try to capture him. And uh, you can place uh, roadblocks and you can also destroy his labs because, of course, he's going to have operation labs uh, throughout the country. So it is a... Uh, uh, Patron is doing a push your luck kind of cat and mouse game hiding mm -hmm. around Colombia while uh, all of the other factions are working together to close the net around him and capture him. No, it sounds very cool. I'm guessing that this symbolizes something very interesting. It, it, I mean, look, it was the operation at the time, and yes, we pulled no punches. It is based on the Netflix show, so yes, the currency is of the uh, white nature, and, and that is just, uh, this is just, certain objectives will require uh, the cubes and uh, different things along the way. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we dive right into it, and, and destroying those labs is like one of uh, the goals in the game. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously you want to shut him down before he could get too powerful. Exactly, exactly. So it, it uh, I mean, the show itself has a lot of historical accuracy and talks about sort of the, the dual nature of the character, and yeah. uh, we try to capture that in this game as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I love the show and, you know, the whole story. I mean, this thing that we grew up with in the 80s was the whole Pablo Escobar and cocaine coming over and everything. And yeah. Then you, now you get to play it out and kind of like, try to stop him before he gets to do everything. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's great. We're looking forward to this. So it is a November release, and uh, we're looking forward to it getting into stores. I'm looking at, we talk about, you know, now the company is called CMOM, but as you know, at one point it was called Cool Mini or Not, and this is just a cool mini. This is, look at this, look at the size of this. This is the actual size of the, mini that you're going to get for this game and this is 
from what I understand, this is an actual board and you play on this. Yeah, this is uh, the game board itself. It uh, nearly uh, killed our, uh, our, the designer, Remy Tr uh, Tremblay, who uh, put his uh, blood, sweat, and tears into this. Uh, I, I, I do need to correct you. Uh, we can't legally call this a mini, so we will get in a lot of trouble if we call it. No, I'm joking, of course. But, what? Uh, no, it's 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 just so big that uh, it's a it's a maxi. I mean, this is like yeah. I've never seen something this big and so detailed and so gorgeous, and it's a game like. Yeah. This is taking things to a new level, like a real new level here. We wanted to try something really interesting. Like uh, a lot of a lot of games will come out and they've got interesting new mechanics, uh, cool minis and stuff. But we wanted to just like blow the box wide open with this, and so we said, why not? Why not do it? And uh, we think it turned out really well. The response has been really good. And I mean, as you can see, with it painted all up and it's all its horrific glory, like you can't wait to get that to the table. So very excited about this one for uh, and, Cthulhu Death May Die. Yes, and we're just gonna. I'm just sure. gonna play with this. I, I, I feel like there's a security person back here, but I'm gonna still spin this around. So you actually, from what I understand, you actually move your pieces right up here in the water, and you're coming up and literally fighting Cthulhu in this. Yeah, yeah. It's it is it is uh, meant as like the season finale for uh, the first season of the game. So uh, I, I I think that people are really going to like I mean obviously it's got uh, some serious board presence and uh, I think people are gonna have a lot of fun with it when they do get it to the table so oh this is yeah this, this is uh, okay I, I'm doing it I'm it's got oh weight goodness. to it too this is incredible this is like when you say like I mean I'm feeling this thing and I'm like this is this is the best mini I've ever seen for any game ever yeah I mean this is incredible the, the amount of detail and the amount of, of everything in it and you know I got to play Death May Die at the Gathering and yes, awesome. I absolutely love the game and to be able to play on this board yeah. and to be able to you know have this as part of it is just this is next level this is really next level and yeah, it's just cool yeah. I'm telling you guys it, it's, just, it's already past Kickstarter right? What's or that? Is this, this is already done with the Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter is done, but late pledges are still available. So if people are interested in late pledges, they can still they can still get on board, uh, join the fight against evil, become one of the investigators, and uh, fight Cthulhu, punch Cthulhu in the face. Yes, and, and have a mantelpiece. I mean, this is not just something that you play a game with. This is something you could put on like your coffee table and have it as a mantelpiece in your house. It is just that incredible. I mean, I know you could sort of see it in the video, but when you see it in real life, you're like, it just just blows me away. It this takes really your breath away a little bit. Yeah, like when you see uh, the actual finished product in all its painted glory, it's just, yeah, it, it, it is quite awesome. So we wanted to take it to the next level. We're known for our minis, and we just wanted to deliver something that we knew the fans were going to love. Yes, well, I'm a fan, and I love it. Hopefully you guys like it, too. We're going to move on to look at some more stuff from Simon. So now we're looking at the game. This was on my top ten. We talked about games that were in my top ten of games I was looking forward to at Gen Con and this was one of them because I love these designers. I love Simone. He does amazing work on every game he's ever done and Tell me about Newton. I'm so excited about this one. Yeah, awesome. Us, us as well. So Newton, in Newton, uh, uh, players take on the role of students. And so they are following in the steps of Newton and some of the other great thinkers of uh, the time. And throughout the course of the game, they're going to be uh, developing their knowledge on a bunch of different tracks. They're going to be doing experiments. They're going to be adding books to their library. and essentially what they're trying to do is pursue the idea that knowledge is power and they're going to gain points through that. So uh, the main mechanic in the game that uh, you're going to be using is a set of action cards and each of those action cards has a symbol which allows you to do a certain action uh, but uh, as you go throughout the course of the game you're going to start uh, collecting certain actions to get stronger in different fields and you have to make decisions like where do I want to specialize in because it's one of those types of games where you're not going to be able to specialize in everything so like are, do I pursue money or do I pursue like knowledge or uh, do I pursue moving around the board easier so there's, there's like tough decisions you're going to make in th that sense and uh, each year that you play, you're going to play out five cards, and then one of those cards is going to be saved permanently as an action you can do uh, for free, uh, strengthening every time you do that action. So if you do the action uh, to move around the board, uh, you can do that uh, to the strength of 
two or three. And so the more of those symbols that you've played that round, the better you can do that particular action. And so you decide how you're going to specialize uh, in the moves you're going to make. And uh, But you're getting rid of your cards as you do it, so you have to gain new cards throughout the course of the game. So Newton is the type of game where you're always going to be balancing uh, building out your building out your knowledge and your point base with uh, keeping up with like income and the cards you're going to need to continue to go forward. So it's got that beautiful tightness that uh, forces those uh, tough decisions. So yes. we're excited about this one for oh, sure. Oh, trust me, uh, I'm super excited. I'm super excited about this one because I, I mean. I love their games. Obviously, yeah. loved Lorenzo, which you guys did as well. Amazing game. And this is this is going to fit right in that line. So, absolutely, yeah. I, I think that uh, I think that there is enough uh, of a challenge. Like, so this one uh, is a little even more uh, brain birdy than I would say uh, Lorenzo was. It's going to force a little tougher decisions, but I think people are going to really like it. It's one of those uh, games where the rules are easy, but the decisions are tough, and I think that that's the sign of a good game. Yeah, I mean, I could we could see it here, sort of. It looks like they're about to set up a game or about to get into another game. Yeah. But I can see there's a few different maps and you're yeah. You're, so you're moving around there. Yeah, you're moving around Europe, visiting uh, different universities and different uh, important sites around uh, the the uh, continent. Here, you're developing your knowledge base. So there's many different paths that you can go on uh, where you can develop your knowledge. And here, you're developing uh, your money and your work base. So like you're you're t taking your knowledge and turning it into your currency. And then everybody has their own personal board here, where uh, they're building out their bookshelves, which are going to score points for you at the end of every year. So the sooner you develop those, uh, the more points it's going to earn you throughout the course of the game. And then each uh, of the individual player boards has a different uh, symbol, which is one of the actions uh, that you're going to do throughout the course of the game. So each person has kind of a specialty in one of those ah. actions, and you're going to play. So for example, if I played this here, I could do uh, the, the knowledge development track. I could move on that to the power of two now, because I've got nice. two of those symbols. And then at the end of a round we're gonna have five of these different cards out here and then you're going to uh, decide on one of these cards is going to slide down here like this and to make now, even more effects Ooh. Yeah, to make even more effect and then uh, what's going to happen is you've now kind of used that card permanently so you're going to have to acquire more cards more ca oh. throughout the course of the game but now I've got uh, but now I've got this as like a permanent symbol so now when I do that action I do it a little bit better throughout the course of the game and this also works as sort of a timer for the game because you're going to go through this many years and then yeah yeah and that, and that kind of shows and you, you build up and you exactly. get stronger and doing more things i'm i'm really excited about this one i can't wait till we get to play it because this is this is my kind of game and if you like euros this sounds like it's going to be a really great euro so we're back and looking at one more game here at the simon booth this is one that everyone z sam tom we're talking about is one of their looking forward to games railroad inc and i love roll and write games and this one looks really fantastic. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a turn here while we do this so we could figure out the game. But first of all, I have to say one of the things that I noticed right away is dry erase boards. That is... When I saw that, I was like super happy, like not a pad uh, like that you're gonna like scratch off and throw away, like already dry erase boards in there. And then they kind of double really well as like a cheat sheet in a hidden screen. So like you, uh, they're very functional. Uh, yes. And, and they come as roll and writes, or excuse me, as dry erase. So right off the bat, you're like, that's great. We've got our scoring here. We've got all of our information right there. So uh, yeah. I mean, I love I love the the design of uh, of the the board right off the bat. So what's going to happen on the turn is we're going to play six or seven turns depending on like whether we're using an expansion or not. There's a base game that's just going to use uh, the white dice, and you can see we've got some different cities that uh, start off with either roads or railroads, and you're going to roll them, and then each player is going to use all four dice, and each of the routes that you use here have to be have to be either connected to a city or have to be connected. I'm going to pull this right. Yes. There we go. There we go. I figured out how to do it. By the way, I that's love these. That's part of the challenge. Yeah, those are good too. I love yeah, these. Yeah, those are really nice. So uh, 
everyone is going to use all of uh, the dice that are coming out there, and each of them has to be connected to either a route that's already been built or a city. So I could use this one here yeah. and make a railroad. Yeah. I could then maybe use that and, and aim towards yeah this you, one here because I might try to loop it around sure, at some point. Sure. Or, or you could or you could aim it. Yeah. Maybe and, I'll do this. Any sort of actually, way. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna erase. Thankfully, there's erasers in this. On, on, on the thing already. I'm going to do this just so I can make a connection. There we go. And I'm going to come here. This man's thinking ahead. This, and then I'm going to figure out how to draw this thing properly. And make myself a railroad with a road. And then, oh, I've got another road. Oh, look at this great route I've made. I don't, I don't know if this is good or not, but I've now made a route. Uh, let's see what, oh no, see this is good because uh, what you're ultimately trying to do is uh, create networks between your cities and the more cities that are connected. So this city here is not connected to the city because this one's going off in a road and this one's a uh, railroad, but you've got like a good start to both of these cities and you can start making connections. The more cities that are connected, you're going to get points for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get a points for your longest road and your uh, longest road railroad and also we've got this uh, center square here where you're going to get uh, points for each different uh, square here that you built something uh, but you're going to lose points for any uh, any uh, unfinished route so if this roof ends up just being a dead end you're going to lose a point for each dead end oh. you have now each game, we've got two editions of Railroad Inc. We've got the Blazing Red Edition and the Deep Blue Edition. And each of those have two different uh, mini expansions in there. So if oh. we were playing yeah, if we were playing with the Meteor Edition here, we'd roll all of these dice. And uh, the Meteor would tell us, uh, starting from the center spot, uh, where, uh, what direction uh, a Meteor is going to go and how far. And then there's going to be a Meteor explosion there and it'll blow up anything that might have been in that square and then from that point you're going to mark it that that was your last meteor uh shower and uh you're gonna the next time a uh, meteor hits you're going to be going off of that point so you have to be careful where you build things but meteors li uh, leave powerful uh ore and minerals behind and so if you've got a dead end leading into a meteor blast you're going to get more points and this one the blazing red comes with the volcanoes and the meteors that's right what does the blue one come with? Uh, the blue one comes with the rivers and lakes. So this one is a little more destructive. This one's evil. I think I like yeah. blue better. Blue sounds good. I want to make rivers and blue lakes. Blue is a little more chill. But uh, <laughs> yeah, at the end of the game. And then you've got a few uh, different uh, special ones that you can use. You can use uh, one of those per turn up to three over the course of the game. Oh, this is great. And I love how the expansions, they fit like red is a hot color and you're doing volcanoes yeah. and meteors. And blue is a peaceful color and you're getting the rivers and the lakes yeah. and you could put it you could throw it all together and have like a river that a meteor goes into and then the lake gets hot yeah uh, oh absolutely well so you could with both editions you can play with up to 12 players so this goes up to six but with uh with both editions you can go all the way up to 12 so um, so are the boards also like these are red obviously the blue ones are thematically blue yeah oh so this is they work great together. yeah and it's a nice little package like uh everything you need is uh just in there so it's great yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, so we have it on sale here, but it'll be in stores in November. Ah, so those of you at Gen Con, which probably will be seeing this afterwards, but there's there's a few copies available at Gen Con, but yeah, retail in November. And this one, I think this one's going to be really hot. I mean, I I love Roll and Writes, and this seems like it's a lot of fun, a connection Roll and Write. Yeah. So I think that's it that we have for Simon. So this has been Jason Levine giving you a little Gen Con preview.